Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, it's all about the market collapsing. So here's six reasons why Bitcoin just collapsed to just above 17,000. And this is, really is the only story. We're gonna go over six different aspects and see which one is the most likely. So let's jump into today's market, see what the heck just happened. So today is Thanksgiving Day, so congratulations, we made it. Uh, have a great Thanksgiving for all of you uh, Americans out there, US residents. For everybody else, eh, you don't really know what's going on. It's just a, a day for us to give thanks and to eat a ton of food. That's really what it comes down to. Also, before we get into the article, uh, you may have noticed uh, that my audio may sound uh, good or may sound not so great. I'm using a new setup because yesterday's microphone just crashed on me and I, there was a lot of different issues with it. So we'll see how this new setup goes and uh, just give me some feedback what you think about the audio. And uh, if it does work, then we'll keep this. If not, uh, we'll do some more upgrades. So anyhow, here's what happened. Bitcoin, massive uh, pullback. I'm not going to say a dump because people always say it's not a dump. Okay, well, we'll set, we'll call it a pullback, which I think is what it is. And this is what I'm always talking about as far as dollar cost averaging. Um, you can go all in at some point and that's cool. And, uh, you know, but you have to wait a long time. This is just a, a safer option, especially when these types of dips happen. To me, this is a godsend. I don't know what it is for you, but uh, for me, this is enormous. I am super happy today because uh, I can buy uh, Bitcoin at a 10% flash sale. How awesome. And actually, I, I sent out a tweet and I said, hey, for all you people sitting down on your Thanksgiving uh, table and you're telling all your friends and family and loved ones about Bitcoin, don't forget to, to mention this. Hey, Bitcoin has become so mainstream that it's also doing a Black Friday uh, flash sale. So just like everything else out there, uh, Best Buy and Walmart and everything else, uh, Bitcoin's also getting the game and they're having a flash sale right now. You can get it for 10% off maybe 20% by Friday, who knows? So uh, just remember to tell them that uh, that's what's going on. Also, uh, everything's just down. So I'm not gonna go over it. It doesn't really matter. We know it's down massively, but if you're a dollar cost average like me, <laughs> this is such a great day. And uh, that's it. I Before I move into, on the next story, I remember when I got in, into uh, crypto in 2017, and then everything crashed and all these different pundits, all these people that are really not around anymore, uh, that they said something that would, totally infuriate me, which is the same thing I just told you, which is, oh, this is such a great day because it's down so much. And I was like, who the hell are you talking to? Do you, do you see how bad the, the market is? I didn't understand the power of dollar cost averaging. And now I totally get it. So like if me in 2017 would look at this and be like, this sucks. I can't believe how bad this went. This is awful. But I hadn't put in the time. I hadn't put in the work. And uh, here I am at this point in, in the game. And maybe you are, or maybe you are not. But just know that um, wherever you're at, uh, it doesn't matter. Really, it doesn't matter. As, as time moves on, everything will go up. The cryptocurrency is going to swallow up everything. It's going to be 10 times bigger than the internet revolution. And it's going to be massive. So uh, right now, just Take it for a grain of salt. If you dollar cost average, this is a great day. If you haven't and you're just starting into it, uh, just take your lumps. That's all I can say. Money isn't made overnight. There are no get rich quick schemes. And these are the things that you have to do. These are the things that I've done. I've taken over three years now. And I've taken my lumps, my hard hits, and this is what it is. All right, let's jump into today's top story. So six reasons why Bitcoin collapsed. This is going to get deep on the very uh, after we go through the whole thing. Um, the very first one, I'll get. I'll, I'm going to uh, backtrack to this. Is another great piece by Alex Dobnia. Got to get him on the show. He never responds to my Twitter, my tweets. No love. Anyhow, so it states here: Bitcoin lost over two thousand its value over the past twenty four hours. Yeah, pretty big massive dip, right? Went to seventeen two. Now it's at seventeen one. May even break into the sixteens. Who knows? So there's six reasons. There's a Mnuchin bombshell, brutal rejection close to the all time high, overheating futures market, high social volume, whales sending coins to exchange, and declining network activity. So I'm gonna go over this first one. I'm gonna briefly touch on it, but I think this is the biggest one, and I'll I'm gonna backtrack in a bit. So Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong expressed his concerns about outgoing Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin rushing draconian crypto wallet regulations. Here's a quote, or we'll go into it later. Mnuchin, who was personally told by President Trump to go after Bitcoin, has been very vocal about the risks associated with the cryptocurrency. And again, when you are in that realm of, of, uh, of high placement, high society, a lot of money, this is a threat to you. So this is not surprising to me. This is not surprising that people in power would want to do away with this. And uh, for 
Trump has even said, he's even tweeted out, hey, I don't like Bitcoin. It's nothing good and da, da, da. So um, yeah, he. I don't believe he was really the right president for a cryptocurrency. Just my opinion. You, you're allowed to disagree with me all you want in the comment section. Anyhow, we'll come back to this piece here. There was a brutal rejection uh, to the all-time high. Uh, flagship, the crypto, our Bitcoin reached 19.4. That's amazing at uh, 1.50 p.m. And then it contracted to 19.1. So what's going on here? People are taking profits. Uh, people are scared. They haven't seen it go this high besides 2017. So they've put all their stop uh, orders in, all their you know orders to actually sell out. I have those same orders. Didn't hit the order, but uh, that's okay. And uh, these are the things that are happening. So people are selling. That's what it comes down to. There's an overheating futures market. This I did not know. Funding rates across the top exchanges that offer perpetual crypto futures, which means it just never expires, have been on the rise. As a result, over leveraged longs got wiped out with a total Bitcoin open interest shedding almost 14%. That's huge. Then there's this piece about high social volume. One day prior to the plunge, Bitcoin search interest hit a new 2020 high. And it just talks about Bitcoin Google Trends which I'm gonna show you why it doesn't make a darn bit of difference. So this is Google Trends, okay? And Google Trends is, it doesn't show you uh, actual search volume, like there was 150,000 people searching for Bitcoin yesterday. What it, what it shows you is a time frame between zero and 100. And think of it like a pain level. Zero is no pain. 10 is the most excruciating pain you've ever had in your life. So it's like, it's talking about like how high is are the Bitcoin searches. So over 12 months, yeah, on November 15th, 21st, it was at 100. Just call it like the most of all over the last 12 months. So you're probably thinking, wow, that's a lot. It's not a lot. I'm going to show you why. And I've done this before. So if you take a look at the whole enchilada over the whole time frame, nobody talked about Bitcoin in 2004 until about 2011. Here's where everybody talked about it the absolute most. In 2017, this is when everybody went on fire. You know how much it is right now? 15. Who cares? 15 on Google Trends. So that's why I know that Google Trends is not really a good indicator of what is happening in the crypto market. You know what is a good indicator of what's happening in the crypto? The Twitterverse. Everything that happens first pretty much happens on Twitter. It is the fastest way to get information out. You can send a tweet in no time and trade the chain, which is what I've signed up before. They are one of only four crypto firms that have a direct API to Twitter. They even crawl all the different big websites like Binance and Coinbase for all the different information about when things are listing, partnerships and all those things. And you get them in an app called Slack. Slack just notifies you when things are about to hit those exchanges and you can make some pretty good gains. Now this is good for me as a dollar cost averager because I want to know when things are going to go way massively up or I want to know when things are going to go way massively down so I can kind of time my dollar cost average. But for traders, this is something you should probably look into. There's a link in the description. Okay, the next whales are sending coins to exchanges. This is the same thing. When when a bunch of people, especially people with high net worth, are sending their crypto from their wallets to the exchanges, there's only one reason for that, because they're going to sell and cash out. So this is uh, CryptoQuant CEO Ki Young Ju notes that Bitcoin whales started depositing Bitcoin to crypto exchanges a few hours prior to the crash. That is also on Trade the Chain. You get alerts as far as like whale, whale alerts. And here you go right here. 14 million USD, 965 Bitcoin, 300,000 link, 14.5 USD transferred. So you'll get a big uh, alerts like this. So yeah, it only makes sense. And lastly, declining network activity sentiment points to the declining number of daily active addresses, which is usually a bearish sign. So not many people are using it as much. Okay, so that's the six reasons, but I need to go into detail to this very first one because this is, this is effective, but it's not that big of a deal and I'll explain why. The Mnuchin bombshell. So this was put out by Brian Armstrong and there's a great article uh, on Coindesk, but I'm not going to go over it because I want to go right to the source. And the source is Brian Armstrong. And I've had my differences with Coinbase and I talk about how they're going down and blah, blah, blah. And, and it's true. I don't like it because I want to push them to actually do something better. But this cryptocurrency universe that we all live in, we are like, if you think about it, kind of like a dysfunctional family, right? No one, sometimes we get ticked off at our brother or our cousins or whatever else. But if one attacks the, my brothers or my sisters, 
then I'm going to be that guy who's going to step in like, you better slow your roll because this is what it's going to come down to. So when Brian here is talking about the different crazy regulations that are coming down, I'm like, God dang it, you can't do that to Brian. So here's what he said. Last week, we heard rumors that the U.S. Treasury and Secretary Mnuchin were planning to rush out some new regulation regarding self-hosted crypto wallets before the end of the term. For those who don't know, self-hosted wallets, and what he's saying is the self-hosted wallets are things that we have, like a nano ledger, things on our phone, right? We don't have custodian like the big institutions do. Uh, self-hosted crypto wallets are important because they allow anyone to use this new technology to ex access basic financial services just like anyone can use a computer. The open nature of crypto is what makes a powerful tool for innovation. And it's what levels the playing field globally. It's what fuels innovation. And government's not good for innovation. They're good for regulation, not for innovation. This proposed regulation would, we think, require financial institutions like Coinbase to verify the recipient or owner of the self-hosted wallet, collecting identifying information on that party before a withdrawal could be sent to that wallet. So. Of course, when we sign up for Coinbase, they're going to know exactly who we are. But now what they're, they're saying is that we want to know where you're sending that money to. So, okay, got it. And then he says, this sounds like a reasonable idea on the surface. It doesn't to me, but whatever. But it is a bad idea in practice because it's often impractical to collect identifying information on a recipient in the crypto. Let me explain why. So before I go on, this is why I created Dan Teaches Crypto. I know we did a video about talking to an open letter to PayPal users, and I explained to them why PayPal having control, a, a singular entity, which is centralized, is a bad idea, and I explained why. And people are like, who cares? Because PayPal users are going to do their, their own thing. I'm like, yes, I know they're going to do their own thing, but they have to know exactly why that is, and then they can make the decision. Not 100% are going to come to our way of thinking, but if I can pull just a couple of more people in the life raft, I've done my job. So this is what Brian says. Many crypto users are sending crypto to smart contracts to use DeFi apps. A smart contract is not necessarily owned by any individual or business who could be identified. It's a new type of recipient. It doesn't have any direct equivalent in financial services. Many crypto users are sending crypto to merchants paying for goods and services. Does it make sense to require customers to help verify the identity of a business before they can buy a product there? So if you think that the IRS knows a little bit of information about your business, guess what? They're going to know absolutely everything here. And that's what they're trying to do. But can you imagine the cumbersome effect of verifying, 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 verifying? It'll be a, a nightmare. Many crypto users are also sending crypto to people in emerging markets, such as in uh, Saharan South Africa, where it's difficult or impossible to collect meaningful know your customer info. Some of these individuals are living in poverty and may not have any permanent addresses or form of government ID. Like we send money back to our family in Mexico. So, I mean, how's that going to work out? They have, of course, they have smartphones. A lot. Everybody's got a smartphone. I mean, when we live, when we're in El Paso, we just walk over to Juarez and, you know, go get what we need. And then we come back. But everybody's got a smartphone over there. But they don't may not have a bank. They might not have a bunch of government IDs that, that they can process. So, and then uh, think about in, uh, in, uh, Africa. Think about in Iran, Iraq, uh, the Middle East, and it's going to be impossible. Finally, many recipients in the U.S. are abroad who value their financial privacy may simply not want to upload more, more documents to various companies, which which could be hacked or stolen. So if you want to be a part of this whole program, they're like, I'm not playing the game and I'm out. So I'm not going to use crypto. So pay me in, I don't know, whatever they're going to use. The additional friction would kill many of the emerging use cases for crypto. Crypto isn't just money, it's digitizing every type of assets. And then this would be bad for America because it would force U.S. consumers to use foreign, unregulated crypto companies to get access to these services. So again, America fumbles over its own huge big feet and falls flat in its face. And then what does that mean? Well, it pushes everybody to other different types of exchanges outside the U.S. where, you know, they can make all the money and they can make all the decisions. So great job, America. You're really playing the part. And then to finish up, in this, if this crypto regulation comes out, it would be a terrible legacy and have long-standing negative impacts for the U.S. In the early days of the internet, there were people who called for it to be regulated like the phone companies. Thank goodness they didn't. And yeah, Al Gore uh, was one of those leading people that actually said, no, we can't do this. We have to lead it for innovation. We're not good at innovation. We're the government. We're good for regulation. So we're not going to step on anybody's toes. Let it flourish. And it did. And it worked out great. If they do this, which I hope they won't, uh, we're going to have a lot of problems moving on. So again, let's take a step back. When in doubt, zoom out. Let's look at the big picture. Does this change anything? 
Has Bitcoin been hacked? Has any different crypto been hacked? Has exchanges gone down? Well, besides Coinbase. Have the principles changed? Are smart contracts uh, just not working? Are there different aspects? Are there different problems that need to be solved with cryptocurrency that have already been solved by something else? No, all these things are still the same. When you take a step back, this is just stupid regulation by people who don't know what the heck is going on. So in the short term, if your dollar cost average, this is a godsend because you're going to look at this and the price will probably fall a little bit more and you can pick up some cheap cryptocurrencies, digital assets. However, uh, may not work out and uh, maybe it'll go, go in reverse. Don't know. But I was telling you this for me, I'm still long term. It makes a lot of sense that things will be solved. Things need to be done. And that's it for today. So enjoy your Thanksgiving. I really appreciate it. If you like these types of videos, Two months going to pop up on your left and right, so check those out. And that's it. I got to go eat some food. I'll see you on the next one. Bop, bop.